Um, I mean, Could you identify yourself, please? Yeah, uh, Paul Alexander with Congressman Sangmeister of Illinois. Um, I mean, you spoke about the, the crude mission to Mars. Um, do you still support that? I mean, you supported it in the 80s. Do you still feel that we should do that? Uh, my view is something like this. Uh, in the uh, Bush administration, um, President Bush strongly supported human mission to Mars. Uh, it was called SEI, Space Exploration Initiative. Um, the kind of numbers that we heard about were, were uh, hundreds of billions of dollars to send one mission of humans to Mars and something like a 30-year uh, time scale. Now, that was widely recognized as politically undoable, never mind technological or other issues. Uh, now, you might argue that uh, three, four, five hundred billion dollars isn't all that much money. It's uh, the amount stolen in the savings and loan scandal. And nobody seemed to mind that very much. Uh, so why not use it here? It would certainly be a better use of it uh, than uh, the, the theft of money by uh, rich bankers. But uh, uh, that's not the way it works. It turns out that $300 billion from Mars is unacceptable. $300 billion uh, stolen. Uh, in the savings and loan scandal is a uh, uh, slap on the wrist. Um, no members of the government, as far as I know, have uh, ever been jailed uh, for that. Uh, it's too expensive. Uh, I know I'm rambling. In addition, it's too far in the future. Why should considerable political capital be spent now so that uh, 30 years from now, some other president who knows, of a different political party even, might reap the benefits. If it were possible to have a human mission to Mars on a time scale of 10 or 15 years and a cost of under $100 billion, which would fit well within the present spending envelopes of NASA and the other spacefaring nations, then it's a completely different story. Then it is uh, achievable. The time scale is practical. People can work on it during a reasonable lifetime. And uh, such a mission I would strongly support. There uh, are some recent studies suggesting that there might be ways uh, of doing that. Uh, one aspect of which is you use the Russian energy booster. Another is you uh, use your, uh, you provide your propellants for your return mission to Earth from Martian materials. You don't have to carry it to Mars. So uh, under those circumstances, I think I would support it. But the uh, longer time scale savings and loan scandal level of expenditure missions, uh, I would not. Founders with Space News. It's a little bit of a follow-up to I'm sorry, you're with Space News. Yes. A little bit of a follow-up to that. You had said earlier, though, that before human space flight should be um, considered, the function has to be identified. Yes. Um, what would be your argument for the, even though it would be economically feasible, for that, that human uh, presence on Mars? Yes. Uh, you remember before I was, uh, I was asking, could the sum of a set of individually inadequate justifications add up to an adequate one? And clearly, the cheaper the overall cost, the more likely it is that the answer to that question is yes. My seat of the pants judgment, and uh, you know, if you asked me to, to justify it in a way that would convince everybody, I don't know that I could. But my seat of the pants judgment is that if it comes in under $100 billion, and it can be done in 10 or 15 billion years, the benefits uh, become uh, highly cost effective. And uh, by that I mean the science, even though you could do great stuff with robots, the uh, inspirational value for young people and others, education, technological spin-off, uh, national pride, uh, cooperation with other nations, and the building of bonds between uh, industrial nations. All of that put together, uh, it seems to me, uh, would be worth them under those circumstances. Same argument to, to Space Station, though, that as the cost is decreased, that those particular uh, benefits that people are arguing for would, would become 
uh, better arguments? I have more trouble with it for space station, although I'd be happy to consider it for space station, because uh, space station is not exploratory. Uh, it doesn't do any science, certainly not any fundamental science. Um, it, um, it doesn't have the same virtues that going to Mars goes. But of course, if we were going to go to Mars, then you would have to be sure that we could do it safely, and the way to find out what it takes to do it safely would have to be something like space station. So it's a question of order, but if we made a national decision, if some president decided that this were uh, uh, something historic that he or she wanted to do, um, then I think the role of space station would fall neatly into place. The trouble is, that we are trying to justify space station before we have any uh, commitment to sending humans to the planets, and so it always seems to be uh, incommensurate with uh, the objectives. And, and uh, um, you know, we, we always heard of shuttle as the next step, but we never heard what it was the next step to. And then we heard of space station as the next step, and we never heard what it was the next step to either. In Werner von Braun's vision, he knew the answer to those questions. Shuttle was the step to space station, and space station was the step to Mars. But um, this was considered uh, uh, politically uh, infeasible to speak it, its name out loud. And so we always had these truncated assessments. It's the next step, don't ask to where. Um, and I think that, uh, that issue of what is the function of space station is very much on the, in the minds of members of Congress. and. Uh, is very much uh, part of the reason why there is so much uh, skepticism uh, about it. Uh, some of which, it seems to me, is perfectly justified, and some of, some of which seems to me a little bit unfair. Yes, please. Could you identify yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, Tom Adams. I'm with the National Weather Service. It seems to me that uh, one of the basic problems, I mean, and you've essentially stated it yourself, is that in justifying science, including the space shuttle or manned spaceflight, part of the problem is, is justifying it in so, so, uh, philosophical grounds. And, and in many ways, that's the only way we can justify any of this. If, if you look at this calculus of economics in terms of trying to justify it in uh, a cost-benefit sort of approach, you always fall short. And so a lot of it does come down to um, the need to to reach out to the universe and uh it is intangible and so i'm wondering if you would uh, agree with that Thanks. to some degree um this is fundamentally a religious argument um and not everybody shares that particular faith and so if mars called to you from childhood and if you always wanted to visit there and if you always imagined that uh, human spaceflight was the obvious uh, culmination of the human exploratory instinct, that of course we would go there, then all of this debate seems uh, foolish, and besides the point, and, you know, let's get on with it. But not only does not everybody share that view, I think most people do not share that view, and if you had children who didn't have enough to eat, the idea of spending a hundred billion, much less three hundred or five hundred billion dollars to uh, send some people to Mars, would seem ludicrous. And that's what I'm talking about. There, there's a real point against what's the hurry, they might very well ask us. Mars has been there four and a half billion years. Uh, so it'll be there another 30 years, 50 years, 100 years. Okay, for me, the romantic me, the, the kid who always wanted to go to Mars, you know, age seven, 30, 50, 100 years from now uh, doesn't answer my needs. I won't be around then very likely. Um, so uh, I have a personal vested interest, but that should not cloud my judgment, because we're talking about national policy, and for national policy, uh, the religious urge to go explore the planets uh, just doesn't carry much water, it seems to me.